Hi students, in this video, we're going to cover inverse functions. So an inverse function is a function that undoes the operations of another function. For instance, if we have the function f of x equals 2x plus 3, the steps for this function are you multiply the input value by 2 and then you add 3. The inverse of a function would reverse the order of those operations and do the opposite of each operation so that we would have the steps. We subtract three from the output value and then we divide by two. So actually we can see that. So say we have F. So we know F of uh, we'll say five. So F of five is going to equal two times five plus three and we know that that is 13. So the inverse function would have, you, you take the, you start with the output value, so we're gonna have 13, and then we subtract two, uh, we subtract two from that, uh, we subtract three, I'm sorry, we subtract three from that, and that's gonna equal 10. So for the first step, we subtracted three, and then in our second step, we're gonna take that value and divide by two, and the result is the input value that we started with. So that's how inverse functions work. The notation that we're going to use, if we have a function f of x, the inverse function is f with a superscript or an exponent technically of negative 1. And we read that as f inverse of x. So if you have a table of values, the way you can recognize that the functions are inverses is that all of the input values for the original function are the output values for the inverse function. So here we have our inputs, the x values, and we have our outputs for the y values. Notice that all of the inputs become the outputs for the inverse function and all of the outputs become the inputs for the inverse function. So the columns just flip around. If you have the graph of an inverse function, the functions are symmetric around the line y equals x. This is the graph of y equals x cubed. And this is the graph of its inverse function, the cube root of x. Each point has a corresponding point on the inverse function. For instance, if we have the point 1, 2 on the original function, then on the inverse, we would have the point 2, 1. Those points are the same distance from this dotted blue line, for instance. So it, like this point is on the inverse function and the second point is on the original function. They are the same distance away from the blue line. And that's going to be true for all inverse functions. And they're going to be symmetric around this line, which means it kind of divides the, the shape, the combined shape that they make into equal parts. But the symmetry comes from the fact that each point on the inverse and its respective point on the uh, original function are the same distance from the line y equals x. So algebraically, two functions are inverses if when we do our composition of functions, either f of g of x or g of f of x equals x. And so the example that we have here is that if we have f of x equals x squared and g of x equals square root of x, then those are inverse functions because f of g of x is going to be, we, we could put in a temporary step of g of x squared but remember g of x is square root x so the square root of x squared is going to be x or if you did g of f of x you would have the square root of x squared which is still going to be x so in either way if you get f of g of x equals x then that means that the two functions are inverses of each other and so here we're going to verify that x minus 7 and 2x plus 7 are inverses to do that, we're going to do the composition g of f of x. Now, the reason I'm doing that is that it's easier to substitute this function in over here, but it would be the same if we did f of g of x. So g of f of x is going to be 2 
times f of x plus 7. And then we replace f of x with x minus 7 divided by 2. And we still need to add 7. So because we have this fraction, the 2s are going to cancel. And we get x minus 7 plus 7, which is just going to equal x. So that's how we know f and g are inverses. We could have done this the other way where we have f of g of x and that would equal uh, g of x minus 7 divided by 2. And so g of x is 2x plus 7. So we'd have 2x plus 7 minus 7 divided by 2. And that would leave us with 2x divided by 2, which equals x still. We still get x. So for this one, is a little bit uh, trickier, but we get to uh, show some good algebra skills. We have f of x is x plus 3 divided by 2x, and g of x is 3 divided by 2x plus 1, and we need to verify that these are inverses. So in my opinion, it's going to be better to take this and substitute it into 1x. That's always going to be easier is working with 1x as opposed to 2x's. So we're going to have g of f of x is equal to 3 divided by 2 times f of x plus 1. But remember that f of x is actually th um, the x plus 3 divided by 2x. So we're going to substitute that in. So we have 3 divided by 2 times x plus 3 divided by 2x. So let's uh, take all of that out. And then we're going to have uh, plus 1. So if we simplify, we would have 3 divided by the 2s will uh, divide to equal 1. So we have 3 divided by x plus 3 divided by x plus 1. And if we get a common denominator of x in the denominator, that's going to give us 3 over x plus 3 plus x, and all of that is divided by x. So all we did was multiply that 1 by x over x. And so now we're going to have 3 divided by 2x plus 3 over x. I think I made a mistake. This might be a plus. It might supposed to be a, a minus 1. We'll see. And so now when we're dividing by this, you just multiply by the reciprocal and so we would have 3x over 2 times x plus 3. So I think this one was supposed to be verified that they are not inverses. So let's make sure we uh, had the steps correct. We had 3 over 2 times x plus 3 divided by 2x. The 2s cancel, and we had an x. And we had x plus 3 divided by x. Yeah, so these are not inverses because this did not actually turn out to equal x. And that's fine, but this is how we would verify that they are not inverses. So if we're finding an inverse algebraically, the steps are to replace y with x, replace, replace each x with a y, and then solve the equation for y. And the final step is to rewrite the y as f inverse of x. So for example, one, we need to find the inverse of y equals 3x minus 1 plus 2. So our first step is to switch the x and the y. So we have x equals the square root of 3y minus 1 plus 2. So now we just need to solve this equation for y. So that means we need to subtract 2 from both sides. So we would get x minus 2 equals the square root of 3y minus 1. Our next step would be to square both sides of this equation. So we would have x minus 2 squared equals the square root of 3y minus 1 squared. And of course, that's going to give us x minus 2 squared equals 3y minus 1. And then we would add 1 to both sides. So we get x minus 2 squared plus 1 equals 3y. 
And last, we divide both sides by 3. And so our inverse is x minus 2 squared plus 1 divided by 3. And that equals y. And remember that last step is, is to just rewrite the y as f inverse of x. So we switch the x and y and then just solve the equation for y and replace y with f inverse of x. So for the second example, we're going to find the inverse of 4 times x minus 1 cubed plus 7. And the process is exactly the same. So we have x equals 4 times y minus uh, y minus 1, excuse me, y, y minus 1 cubed plus 7. So in this step, we switch x and y. And then we just solve for y for the rest. So the first step is going to be to subtract 7. So we get x minus 7 equals 4 times y minus 1 cubed. And then we'll need to divide both sides by 4. Excuse me. We divide both sides by 4. And so we get x minus 7 divided by 4 is equal to y minus 1 cubed. And then we would um, take the cube root of both sides. So the cube root of x minus 7 divided by 4 would equal y minus 1. And last, we would add 1 to both sides. So we get the cube root of x minus 7 divided by 4 plus 1 is equal to y. So if it helps, at the very top, you can substitute in whatever value you want. I would like maybe use 0. So say x is 0 for this function. So when x is 0, our output is going to be 4 times 0 minus 1 cubed plus 7. So negative 1 cubed is negative 1. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. And negative 4 plus 7 is 3. If we have the correct inverse function, when we substitute 3 in down here, we should get 0. So let's do that. So we would have the cube root of 3 minus 7 divided by 4 plus 1, and that's going to equal whatever y value. So 3 minus 7 is negative 4. Negative 4 divided by 4 is negative 1. So we're left with the cube root of negative 1 plus 1. And the cube root of negative 1 is negative 1, so this actually equals 0. And so we got the x-coordinate that we substituted in, so our work is correct. We could have could have done that on this example too. We just did it. Uh, and so the last one is we have to find the inverse of y equals x minus 3 divided by x minus 2. So the process is going to be the same again. We first switch x and y. So we have x equals y minus 3 divided by y minus 2. And now we need to solve this equation for y. So to do that, we're going to multiply this y minus 2 over here. So we have x times y minus 2 equals y minus 3. The next thing we need to do is distribute our x so that the y gets out of the parentheses. So we get xy minus 2x equals y minus 3. So if we want to solve this equation for y, we need to get all of the y's on one side and get the x's, the x stuff on the other side or the things without a y on the other side. So that means that we're going to move this y over here and we're going to move the 2x onto this side. So that means we would need to subtract y and we would need to add 2x, but we'll do that in a separate step. So we would have x, y minus 2x minus y equals negative 3. But now we have a term with a y, a term that doesn't have a y, and another term with a y. So we now need to move the term without a y over here. So to do that, we're going to add 2x. 
And so we get x, y minus y equals 2x minus 3. So at the start of the year, we did uh, some factoring. And one of the things we did was factoring by grouping. And in this case, uh, we need to take out a common factor of y. So we have y times x minus 1 equals 2x minus 3. And so we uh, divide by x minus 1 on both sides and that's going to give us y equals 2x minus 3 divided by x minus 1. So if it helps, uh, let's substitute in a point. So if we're, because this is a fraction, it's going to be kind of tricky. But notice that this is x minus 2 in the denominator. So I would choose something that gave me like an easy whole number to work with, like x if the bottom is one, then the numerator is going to be what the fraction is going to be, whatever the uh, numerator turns out to be. So let's choose x equals three. So if x is three, then we're going to have three minus three over three minus two, which is zero over one. And of course, that's zero. So if we substitute zero into this function at the bottom and get three, our inverse is correct. So we're going to have two times 0 minus 3 over 0 minus 1, which equals negative 3 divided by negative 1, which equals 3. So we got the input value that we started with. So that's how we know our inverse is correct. And so the last thing is not all functions have inverse functions. If the graph of a function doesn't pass the horizontal line test, then the function does not have an inverse function. Now we we can still apply that algebraic process that we just did. It just means that the inverse function itself is not a function. Like we did that for uh, this example. We ended up with uh, uh, we ended up with the parabola. A parabola isn't a function whose inverse is a function. Um, so this parabola doesn't pass the horizontal line test. When we draw a horizontal line, we hit the graph twice. So that means that uh, that function, the inverse of that function is not a function. That doesn't mean that we can't do an algebraic process. And this cubic function, no matter where we draw a horizontal line, we don't actually hit the graph twice. So if a function passes the horizontal line test, it means that that function is one to one. And what that means is for each X value, there is a unique Y value. So there is a unique y value. And you can see for uh, a parabola that's not true because for x equals negative 2 and x equals 2, both of the points 2, 4 and negative 2, 4, they share that um, y coordinate of 4. So 4 isn't a unique y value for an x. So that's what it means to be 1 to 1. All right, so that concludes our video on inverse functions. Uh, thanks for watching.